It's summertime. I want to go out and shoot some photos on my SX70 camera and even some pack film. Yeah, but it's 100 degrees outside. <sighs> Don't worry. I have a sweet and easy hack and cheap, by the way, to get you out there and shoot photos without your photos turning that dreadful magenta color. And to show you this demonstration, I'm going to hit the streets. I think I might call my buddy Caleb and his girlfriend Alex and hit Portland. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. You've probably experienced this or maybe you're just getting started in this hobby. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, magenta Polaroid photos, what's that mean exactly? Polaroid film has come a long, long, long ways uh, since the Impossible Project days. You don't have to baby the film as much as you used to back in the day, and I've done lots of things kind of proving that. But there's one thing you still have to keep in mind, and that is weather. If it's too hot or if it's too cold, the film doesn't quite develop properly. If it's hot outside, your photos are going to turn a little bit more magenta, a little more pink, and maybe not look as saturated in color. And if it's really cold outside, your photos are just going to look really, really blue and just really not great looking. So you're probably thinking, well, I just can't go out and shoot. No, that is false. You can. And here's a super quick, easy, cheap way to go about it. And I've even introduced this idea last year during uh, one of the episodes of my Halloween special. And the video was uh, like three instant photography hacks you should try. And I had this chiller bag for the photos. And I didn't get to fully test it then. It was more of a proof of concept and idea. And it appeared to work. But I want to put it to even more test. So I got this. This is a lunchbox. Yeah. And inside the lunchbox are just two ice packs. Yeah. I think the total cost for all this was just under 20 bucks. And these just stayed on one side of the lunchbox. And I'm gonna put my photos on the other side. I think it's gonna work, let's find out. So the cameras of choice that I'm using in this video to test it out, an SX70 camera, but this has actually been converted to shoot 600 film natively built in. So the shutter has been adjusted and everything. So it's basically an SLR 680 just without the flash. And a pack film camera, this is the Polaroid 2. 50, oh yeah. Uh, film has been provided by one of you lovely viewers. Shout out to you, Bruce, and a Patreon member. Thank you so much for popping over a pack for me to try out. I am really excited about it. More on this later in the video though. So let's get on outside and shoot some photos. We're in some sketchy places in Portland for these photos. <laughs> but sometimes that's what you gotta do to get the best photos. This is a strip club. It's like a shack. I love it. So, finally, the weather's good out here. I'm gonna bust out this FP100 C pack that I got from Bruce. I even put his name on the back of it, so I wouldn't forget. I uh, sent this to me to the PO box. And he's also a Patreon member, so shout out to you, Bruce. Thank you. This stuff expired in 2006. I don't know if it'll, if it'll work or not, but we're going to find out. Put the tab out. That doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It's not closing. We're supposed to be the experts. All right, pause. <laughs> Dang, why can't I remember this? Yeah, I know. It's been a while <laughs> since I've done it. We got it going in the right way. Yeah, that's your dark side. Yeah. Goes on the right. Maybe yeah, it goes open in the, the camera place. first. I don't want to ruin a pack of pack film, so we might just look this one up yeah, real I'm quick. On the, yeah, YouTube it is. Take three. Film is now loaded. <laughs> Without ripping it. Piece of cake. Look at that. First one's ready to go. All right. We got it set to 75. For, yeah, lowest it will go. Closest to 100. Yeah. And the lighten all the way up. That was $10 right there. Now it's about, oh, almost pulled the wrong one. Now we wait a minute or so. All right, here we 
we got a moment of truth. Woo! Look at that. Look at that. That one's pretty dang good. So Caleb and Alex are shooting their photos without the chiller bag and I'm shooting my photos with the chiller bag. So now we'll be able to see a side-by-side -side comparison to see if this thing works. And we're actually shooting the same thing for the most part. So we can get a pretty close representation of how this bag will work or not work. down the drain. When you shoot instant photography, you know, you're know you gonna pick up pretty quickly on you just can't shoot any time you want. You have to choose the right opportunities, the right time of day more specifically. You gotta pay attention to where that sun is located. Shooting into the sun is never ideal. You're gonna get some weird lens flares and potentially just washing out your image. It's just not very good. You wanna make sure the sun is behind you. And for us, we we did pretty good. There was only a couple of times where we w went up to some places where the, the situation was definitely not ideal. Like the Welcome to Portland, Oregon sign. Really wanted to get one of those. Mine came out pretty good, but it's still not ideal. I'd love to have had it, the sun ahead on it. I was shooting into the shade. The sun was just right off to the side of the sign. So what I was able to do was take a photo that I already taken and put it along the side of my camera and use it as a blinder to cover up the light sensor and to cover up the lens. That way I didn't get any lens flares and didn't want to trick the light sensor into thinking that it is a super bright scene and just really underexpose the shot. Mine came out pretty dang good. Uh, Caleb, he was a little jealous, but I think his still came out pretty decent. But this is also a good example of showing the difference between the non-chilled versus chilled photo utilizing this bag. It came out perfect. There's hardly any magenta in this picture. So quick side note, as we were walking around, I happened to notice Caleb having this like briefcase style bag. And I was like, what is that? And when he showed me what it was, it was actually pretty freaking sweet. Check this out. Look at that. Flash bars, I got my accessories all tucked in there. Got my instruction manuals. Have these come in handy to look at when you're trying to shoot though? I've actually had the manual come in handy. Really? I learned that if you peck the button, you don't press it down all the way, your camera could lock up mid-process. Oh. Then I had my original Polaroid originals, my first pack <laughs> of SX-70 that I kept the box and I put my extra pictures in there. Okay. Just like this to ride home safe. <laughs> I love it. Then I keep the full pack behind it, ready and waiting to go. It all bundles up nicely. I need to get me one of these. Yep, and even has some Polaroid branding down there. What, in what year was this out? This or is the original 72 case. 1972. Mm -hmm. Yeah, find me one of those. That's pretty sweet. I'm gonna go into the property a little bit and try and get a photo with some pack film. Cause this thing's just too cool. But I'm gonna be risky and go in and try and get the right shot. But last time you guys were here, they they kicked you out or something? Yeah, yeah they yelled at us. They chased away. I just casually walked up, phone shot, this shot, full right shot, and it's fine. I got lucky. I'm actually really excited for this one. Got my little cooler. There we go. It's still pretty cold in there. It is getting warmer though. How'd your photo come out, Missy? Let's see. Oh. That's pretty good. It's still developing. Looks good. Yep. Looks good. <laughs> I think this one might have gotten messed up. This one was Voodoo. 
Ooh. That looks really good. It's a little magenta, but not that, not that bad. All right, this one, I think part of it, the adhesive that holds the, the, the film on was came, came undone. So let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> but that's still cool. Hey, you got the majority of it. That's still really cool. I think that adds to the picture itself. I think that's actually pretty sweet, even though technically that one kind of failed. Really magenta though. But well, I'm still pretty pleased. The pack film camera. Oh man, I love this thing. It was so much fun. When I was loading it, I was struggling because I didn't. I just didn't put the pack in all the way, so it wasn't quite closing. But man, this thing's so much fun to use. And those photos, I was using the chill bag too, and I think it definitely improved it. It's hard to tell. Um, in this case, if it was just the temperature or just the age of the film, because this film, you know, expired in 2006. I was 16 years old when it expired. I was a sophomore in high school. Kind of crazy. <laughs> and honestly, the one that technically didn't develop all the way and it was failed, I had the beholder, right? I think it adds so much more character to the photo, especially from the location that it's at the message that's all that you're looking at in the picture. It's weird, it's grungy, it's dirty, it looks amazing. I love it. I still have some photos left to shoot with this. Let me know what you guys would like to see me do with the rest of this film. I already have a couple ideas, but I would love to know your thoughts. few other side-by-side -side examples of the chilled photos versus the unchilled photos and there's some serious differences between these two with the heat you tend to lose a little bit of the saturation in the photos from my experience also worth noting Caleb was using an SX70 camera with SX70 film but it shouldn't really alter the pictures that much because we're really just testing the temperature outside so in conclusion did this little homemade hack thing work yeah, it totally did, and it's very inexpensive. You could go a little bit smaller if you wanted to, if you're just going out for and shooting like one pack, maybe just two packs of film. I went with this size because I was putting the, the sealed boxes of film in here so they were still chilled along the way while we were out. This total cost, I got, it was just, I think the bag was like 12 bucks maybe, and, and then the ice packs were like five bucks. A little more experimentation I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna try some other things, but this bag worked out really well. It has a handle that comes undone and you can hook it onto stuff. So I had this dangling on the side of my bag and this pocket right here was super handy. I had the SX, what's it called, 37? Whatever the adapter is to thread on lenses. I had that stored right here so it was easy access. So cool and I used that a couple times especially for that awesome Palms Motel photo. Huh. Wow, exquisite, amazing, I love it. I think I got this at Target, but I'll try and find something similar to this and leave some links in the description below for it if you guys are interested. Now, this only works for hot weather. I have an idea that I need to experiment with for colder weather, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I know that, I think it was Brooklyn Film Camera, they were originally producing a product that would that was temperature controlled to develop your photos in, you know, colder or warm weather, but I don't know what ever happened to that. It was, I think it was a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and it kind of disappeared. I think it was originally supposed to come out like last October. I need to do some research on that. But I do know that thing was bloody expensive. <laughs> it's super cool, but man, that's, uh, that's a tough one to swallow. But nonetheless, still awesome product, and I would love to try it if it ever comes to fruition. But that's all I got for you today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.